When you're using math to solve problems in the real world, you're creating expressions to represent the real world. And it's important to understand or interpret the different parts of those expressions. Before we get to that though, let's review some vocabulary. What I've written right here is called an equation. The reason it's called an equation is because there's an equals sign right there. So we have a, an expression on the left-hand side and that equals another expression on the right-hand side. And because we have an equal sign, it's an equation. Equals equation. Now I could change that, and instead of having an equal sign there, I could have something like greater than, or greater than or equal to. Now we have something which is not exactly equal to, but it's unequal to, and that made that into an inequality. So now we have an expression that's unequal to another expression, and so we call it an inequality. Now if I get rid of the right-hand side altogether, then what I'm left with is just an expression. And that's what we're going to be talking about now, is expressions. Now, an expression might have one term or more than one term. What's a term? Well, this expression has two terms. 2x is one of the terms. 9 is another term. You can see that the terms are separated by a plus or minus sign. And in fact, that's the definition of a term. It's um, a collection of numbers and variables multiplied by each other. And it's separated from other terms by a plus or minus sign. You don't have to have a variable in a term, like 9 here doesn't have a variable. And you don't have to have a number. This could be just x. And you can have exponents and other variables in there too. But that's what a term is. Now let's just remember what a variable is. It's represented by a letter, and the value of it can change. So here we could put different numbers in for x and get different values of the expression. And that's called evaluating an expression for a particular value of a variable. And then finally, the term coefficient. What's the coefficient in this expression? There's only one, there could be more. Well, the coefficient is two. That's the number that's out in front of the variable. Now that we've reviewed that vocabulary, let's take a look at some of the most important things you can interpret from expressions. Here are some of the most important things that you want to understand about any expression that you're dealing with. First, what does each part of the expression mean in the real world? Second, what changes when the variable changes? And what doesn't change when the variable changes? And third, what is the starting value? Let's look at a real-world example. Okay, here we see Olivia's swimming pool is partially filled with 300 liters of water. She turns on the hose and begins adding 5 liters of water more per minute. So what would be an expression for how much water is in the pool? Well, it starts off with the 300 liters, and then it adds 5 liters every minute. What variable should we use for minutes? We could use m, or I like to use t anytime there's time. And there's our expression. Now, let's ask some of these questions about this expression. What does each part mean? Well, 300 is the amount of water that the swimming pool started with. The 5 is the amount of water that's added per minute. And what's t? Right, it's the number of minutes. So now if you understand each part of this expression, you can really understand how it begins to work together. For instance, what changes when the variable changes and what doesn't? Well, the total amount of water in the pool will change as t changes, but certain things don't change. The starting value doesn't change when t changes. It just stays at 300. And the amount per minute doesn't change either. So this 5 doesn't change. This term, though, will also change. So as t changes, this term changes, but this one doesn't. And it's important to understand how an expression is working as the variable changes. And finally, what is the starting value? Well, that's kind of given in the problem here. So we know that it's 300 liters. But if we were just given this expression without an explanation of the problem, we could still find the starting value 
because the starting value is always when time equals zero. So if t equals zero, then five times zero will also equal zero, and this entire term will go away. So then we know that the starting value is 300. Now let's look at an exponential example. The population of bats in a cave at the beginning of a study was 230. And the population grew at a rate of 12% per year. So we can set up an exponential expression to represent this. And you know that an exponential expression usually starts with the starting value there. And there's a few different ways to write this, but we'll go ahead and write 1 plus and then 12% but written as a decimal. So 0 0.12 times, I mean, I'm sorry, to the t power. And that's an exponential expression like you're used to. Now, let's go ahead and ask our questions. What does each part mean? Well, 230, that's the amount that the population starts at. The 1 plus 0.12 is an expression here that includes two parts. The second part is the percent rate of change. In this case, it's positive 12%. And the first part here is always going to be 1 when we write it in this form. So this part inside the parentheses is the full representation of the rate of change. And then, of course, t right here is the number of years. Now let's ask the second question. What changes when the variable changes and what doesn't? Well, if t changes here, obviously the total population is going to change. It changes each year as t gets greater. But there are several things that don't change. The rate, the percent rate of change doesn't um, change. Neither does this entire part inside the parentheses. That's going to be 1 plus 0 0.12 regardless of what t is. And also, this number out in front doesn't change as t changes. This expression with t, though, does change. So this expression has kind of two factors, 230 multiplied by this other factor, which is a parenthetical to the t power, and that's the second factor. This factor will change, but the starting value won't change. And that kind of leads us to our last question here. What's the starting value? Again, this was kind of given to us in the problem, but even if you were given this expression without knowing what it was about, you could find the starting value because you would set the t equal to zero. That's what the starting value, the starting time is. And then anything to the zero power is just one. So this whole thing here to the zero power would turn into one, and we'd have 230 times one, which would just be 230. So we know that the starting value is 230. It's important to know all the ins and outs of expressions that you create, whether they're linear or exponential, because then you'll be able to really understand what's going on in the real world.